So everything seems to be becoming a subscription nowadays, doesn't it? I remember when Spotify and Netflix first kind of came on the scene, it was like $7.99 ish a month for a subscription. And I think there was, it was about the same for Spotify. They were basically around $7.99, which was pretty great because it seemed like, you know, I could have access to this entire catalog and I didn't need to worry about the physical media cluttering my home. It seemed like a pretty good deal, all for that low monthly fee. Now, eight or nine years on, it doesn't seem like such a good deal. We know with streaming, we're actually just renting. We don't have any sort of ownership over the content. And if streamers end up deciding to get rid of media for whatever reason, we have no say in that. Deals fall through with companies. Another platform pays more and takes the content over there. We don't get a say. But as time's gone on, it seems like more and more companies are moving over to this subscription-based model. We're seeing website hosting, cloud software, Software like Adobe, or even things like Microsoft with their Office software. Not to mention the dozens of streaming services which have popped up wanting like between five to $20 a piece for them. So I like to think about this like a pipe that's leaking. You know, if it's dripping in one spot, it seems manageable. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You could stick a cup under it or whatever. But when it's seven or eight different spots that are now leaking from this pipe, cracks are starting to form, it becomes overwhelming. And that's about where we're at today, folks. I'm Spencer, and I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and the ways that we can reduce some of our dependence on modern technology. Today, I wanna to talk about a few different ways that we're kind of being pushed into this subscription-only economy, and then I'm gonna give a few of my predictions of how I think it's all gonna shake out. Let's get into it. First off, a statistic. USA Today reports that the average consumer is spending approximately 219 US dollars per month on subscription-based services. And the crazy part is that that number is 2.5 times higher than consumers actually guessed when they were asked about their consumption habits. People aren't even aware about how much money is leaving their account each month with these services that they're now taking for granted. This is what I'm talking about with the metaphor of the leak. People have no idea how bad it's gotten. So of course, amongst the top categories for these subscription services are streaming services. Now, I personally know people with two, three, even four different streaming services for movies and TV shows. That could cost as much as $100 or even more depending on what type of quality of stream you pay for. Which is crazy because Netflix actually charges you more money if you want the highest quality of stream. You're lucky to even get HD by paying for the lowest tier sometimes. Which is hilarious because camera YouTubers, I watch a lot of that, often talk about needing an 8K camera or like a Netflix certified 6K camera in order to feel like they have enough, that they're future-proofing their gear. Whereas the majority of people who actually pay for streaming are lucky to even get a 720p stream. It's a bit of a tangent, but it just really burns me up. Another crazy thing is the sheer amount of streaming services which have popped up at this point. I have like 40 to 50 VHSs, I have a small collection, and if I wanted to access even two thirds of those movies, I would probably need five or six different streaming services just to get an access to those 40 to 50 movies because they're now spread across so many platforms that it's just that tough to find all of them. And it just seems like every company is starting their own streaming service. Like Scooby-Doo is on one streaming service. Charles Bronson, if I want to watch Death Wish, it's on some other streaming service. And I don't even know what Netflix has nowadays. And of course, The Mouse has pretty much every blockbuster that exists. And they have The Simpsons. But they don't have Joe Dirt. So what do they really have anyways? You don't got no lady fingers, buzz buttles, snicker bombs, church burners, finger blasters, gut busters, zippity doo dahs. Next up, it seems like all software companies are going to a subscription model as well. I remember purchasing my first Adobe Premiere and it was Adobe Premiere Elements. I actually had to buy the disc and it came in a box to install Premiere Elements. I went away from video editing for a while and then when I returned, I was actually surprised to find out about this thing called the Adobe Creative Cloud. So Adobe wants like $100 per month to access their suite of services, nearly $20 just to get Premiere, which is insane. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, folks. Microsoft wants to charge me a monthly fee if I want to be able to open a Word doc or open my budget in an Excel spreadsheet. Like what on earth could be changing about Microsoft Office each month that it needs to be on a subscription? Just let me pay like 50 bucks and be done with it. But it seems like every different software or web application, it wants some sort of payment as well. Website hosting, website design, graphic design software, they all want a monthly fee. 
there's no option to just pay a chunk and then own it. You have to be paying these monthly fees. I think that they've built it into the business model that you're going to forget about their small subscription cost and going to pay it for much longer to a much greater amount than if you were to have just paid a larger amount up front to own the software outright. But a lot of this stuff has been going on for years. So now it's time to talk about the present and the future of the subscription economy. The crazy stuff that companies want you to subscribe for now and what they might ask you to subscribe for in the future. I just read a little while ago that Meta is trying to charge people to be verified on their platform. Like the kind of blue check mark they type thing. To, to look legit on their platform, they want you to pay a subscription cost. Because I guess they couldn't deal with the bots and the trolls on their platforms well enough, so they decided to make good people have to pay a subscription cost to look legit on their platform. That's great. What's more is that it's not $20 once and then get your blue check. It's $14.99 US dollars per month forever. For the price of a Netflix subscription, you are paying to get a bit of clout on social media. Next, are you just going to be able to pay Instagram to get more likes? There also have been a few instances of consumers pushing back against companies trying to force the subscription model on them. It's rare, but it does happen. In 2022, BMW tried to make it a subscription-based thing to access the heated seats in their customer's luxury car. If you stopped paying, you were no longer able to access the heated seats in your $100,000 vehicle. And I'm like, excuse me for thinking that for $100,000, I'd be able to get a feature that comes in some models of the Toyota Corolla without paying a subscription fee. So after enough pushback from customers, BMW did back down on this and just made it something that was available in the car to begin with. But this is one of the craziest things that I've ever heard of a company doing. And at some level, BMW must have known this. But honestly, guys, I don't think that this is the end that we're going to see of these kind of crazy asks to pay subscription fees to access features that should already be in a product that we're buying. Sony's been in the bad books a lot lately, getting rid of people's content that they paid for on their PlayStation, eventually backing down on that. But they also announced that on their Alpha series of cameras, they were going to be adding a paid upgrade where you could pay $150 to get custom frame lines in the camera. Think about it like if you're a portrait photographer and you wanted to do a portrait photo where you turn the camera vertical. They've added some grid lines that help with that and maybe put the subject in a little box so you can compose the shot better. They wanted $150 for that upgrade. The problem with this is when you're buying a used version of these cameras, they're not all the same. Some of them are going to have this paid upgrade and some won't. It's going to be hard to differentiate which cameras are more feature packed than others within the same model. So this isn't a completely new thing in the camera world. Panasonic has done this before too, where you can buy like vlog, unlock certain camera profiles on the camera by paying an extra amount. But I do think this is indicative of a slippery slope where we're gonna continue to have to pay a subscription and ongoing cost for a product that we've already paid quite a bit of money for, which should have a lot of these things built in to begin with. Now, I don't wanna just go after Sony for this because I have a Sony camera and it's been pretty good for me. I've had it for a few years now and they've done a good job releasing updates for it just to keep it in line with some of the newer models. But perhaps they've seen the money that can be had from having these recurring costs associated with devices that consumers were already paying quite a lot for and they want a piece of the pie themselves. Is there a chance that we're going to have to pay a monthly fee to actually use our cameras in the near future? Maybe with the Wi-Fi connectivity we're seeing in cameras, companies are going to be able to lock us out if we don't pay the ongoing fee to continue to use the models. That might be a little bit conspiratorial, but I think it isn't something that is too far off given what we've seen. Certainly with the increased connectivity we're seeing in our cameras, being able to connect them to our computers wirelessly or bounce them to our phones, there is a chance for a company to be able to brick a product if we're not paying to continue to use it. Now, I hope this isn't something that happens, but it is a possibility, I would say. But the reality is, is that these subscriptions are eating us alive. They're like a pack of rabid dogs nipping at our heels as we're trying to get to our respective finish lines. That's a bit of a metaphorical reach, but they are an economic detriment and they're holding us back to a degree that I'm sure of. I think we really need to do our best to avoid such subscription costs. Use products that we can pay for outright, like things like DaVinci Resolve, or even use something that's open source, like OpenOffice. Own physical media and take control of the content that you consume. 
try to use older devices that maybe have a little less connectivity to avoid this kind of pay to play model that we're seeing with cameras and cars. But researchers don't really see this changing. People are just too fatigued from their daily lives to really do anything about this taking place. Though consumers are certainly upset about the mounting costs of operating in this high tech world we're living in, many just sigh and continue to pay. The reality is that people are paying more and more for these subscription services over time, and the amount of companies moving to these subscription-based models is rising alongside it. So what are you doing to face this subscription economy that we're rapidly moving toward? What ways do you keep it in control in your life now? Or do you disagree with me and you see that the pros outweigh the cons and are embracing it happily? Let me know in the comments section, I'd be happy to hear from you either way. This isn't the last that you've heard from me on this topic, but that is all for today. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.